السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى The most gracious, the most merciful الحمد لله All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله And we send complete blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم And we send complete blessings and salutations upon his companions and his household. For indeed they struggled and they strove so much so that we take benefit from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today in this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters in Islam, indeed we are very close to the month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability and the life and the health to be able to witness this month of Ramadan and to be able to make the most of this blessed month. There are many from amongst us that were here last year, yet they might not witness this month of Ramadan. So much so that there are people that were young, people that we did not expect to leave us so early, yet they are not with us today. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us life and to grant us a life that will be beneficial to ourselves so that we may increase ourselves in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters in Islam, indeed this month is very blessed. And we are from amongst those who have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be granted this opportunity. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the most forgiving, He is the most merciful. These are from His names from the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are the ones we recite the most why because we recite it when we begin any recitation Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim why because these are the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is known as Rahman and Rahim throughout the year and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so forgiving he says in a hadith that if someone was to come to me walking then I would come closer to them running so in this month of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be even closer to us meaning to say that we have an opportunity to gain extreme closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all we need to do is we need to take the initiative we need to make the most of this month and more so the value of this month is that in this beloved month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it so much easier for us because he has locked up shaitan shaitan will be locked up in this month so we will be able to control our nafs better there will be no outside influence wherein we can be told where we, where we are left 50 50 whether to do a certain action and then we'd be influenced by shaitan or our nafs would take over so in this month allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has said that oh you believe oh you believers i will make it easier for you i will lock up shaitan and i will make it so much so that in this month I will help you. How? He is teaching us control. In the month of Ramadan, everyone puts focus, everyone puts emphasis on abstaining from food. But that is just the physical aspect of the month of Ramadan. Something that is just as important or you could say even more important than that is the spiritual aspect of this month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so much more closer. Every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming down and he's asking, who from amongst my believers is asking of me? Who from amongst my believers is asking for my forgiveness? So we should try and prepare ourselves for this month. And now how can we prepare ourselves for this month? We can try first and foremost is by increasing our acts of worship. We try and include or involve ourselves in the local masjid or the local masajid to us. How do we do that? We try and go more regularly for salawat. You cannot expect yourself to just stand up when Ramadan comes and stay standing behind the Imam for one and a half, two, three hours if you don't have practice for it throughout the year. It will be very, very difficult. You have to prepare yourself. And for those of us that might not be able to understand the Quran or we are not very familiar with the Quran, when the Imam is reciting, there is not much for us in it. Why? Because we don't understand. We cannot recite with the Imam. We haven't memorized the Quran, for example. So one way to help yourself in this month is you try and memorize certain portions of the Quran, even if it is just a few lines from each chapter. Why? This will keep you engaged and you will look forward to listening to these verses when they are recited. I give you an example. When the Imam in the month of Ramadan is reciting in Salah, 
We are all very common when it comes to the third night, or is it the second night, when the Imam recites Ayat al-Kursi. We are all very familiar with that verse because we know it. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. We are all very familiar with it, so when the Imam recites it, we look forward to it. And in the same way, when the Imam comes up to the 20th night, and he starts reciting Surah Yasin, these are things we look forward to. Why? Because we are familiar with these chapters, we are familiar with these verses. These are things that we listen to on a daily basis, for example. Or we have Surah Kahf, which is recited on, on, on Fridays. So these verses or these chapters are recited so often that we are familiar with them. So when the Imam recites them, we are engaged with the Imam. We are engaged in the Salah. Whereas when they are reciting verses that we might not be familiar with, it is difficult for us to stay focused for the hour, one and a half, two hours. So one way that we can help ourselves is every chapter you look for certain verses that you might find easy or certain verses that might interest you and you try and memorize them. You can do it on a daily basis in the month of Ramadan. It will take you 10, 15, 20, even half an hour to maybe memorize two, three, four, five lines, how much ever you can manage. And when you're behind the Imam in, in, in Salat al-Taraweeh, you look forward to these verses because you do not know in which raka'ah these verses will come. So this will be a means for you to focus and to stay engaged in this act of worship. And in the same way, one way, that in the same way you can try and control yourself and you can try and understand yourself better. How do you do this? This is you prepare before the month of Ramadan and you have time for that. You sit down with yourself, you have your phone, you have a notebook, diary, whatever it might be, and there's two things you need to do. You sit down and you write. You write down everything bad that you might be involved in. Whether it's on a daily basis, whether it's done once, twice a week, whether it's done occasionally, whether it's done a few times in a month. This is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you take it and you write it down. For example, you have the habit of listening to music, for example. Or you have a habit of uh, maybe you're involved in certain actions that bring about the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You write them down and you note them. And in the same way, you also write down all those actions that you do not perform. All those actions that are compulsory for yourself. So for example, if there are salawat that you might miss or you do not recite the Quran on a daily basis, whatever it might be, if you are not involved in certain acts of worship, write them down as well. And then when the month of Ramadan comes, take note of these actions and see what you are doing right and what you are doing wrong. So for example, if you have a weakness of listening to music in the month of Ramadan, if you find it extremely easy to stay away from this act, this bad action, that means that this action is from shaitan. Meaning to say that shaitan is the one who is pushing you in this direction. But in the month of Ramadan, it's very easy for you to stay away from it. Why? Like I mentioned earlier, shaitan has been locked up. So now there is no outside influence on you doing this action. And if there are any actions that you might be involved in in the month of Ramadan that are bad, then this is something that is within from within yourself. Now this is something that you need to control your nafs. You need to ensure that, look, this is my weakness. This is my habit, my addiction, and I need to fix it. And in the same way for the good actions, if it is very easy for you to perform all your salawat in the month of Ramadan, it's easy for you to come to the masjid regularly five times. If it's easy for you to be involved in acts of worship, that means that out of the month of Ramadan, shaitan has a very strong hold or he has a very strong influence on you. And the moment he was removed from the equation, suddenly it became very easy for you to involve yourselves in all these acts of worship. And it became very easy for you to remove yourself from the bad actions. So then you know that these actions are where I need to improve myself. And you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection from shaitan. Why? Because you know that this is my weakness. So we need to use this month of Ramadan to better ourselves in whatever way we can. We know that Ramadan is the month of the Quran. We know that in the month of Ramadan there is Laylatul Qadr which is better than a thousand months. So these are things that we know, they are very common, very famous. However, we should try and do that which is easy and that which we can manage. If you can do something that is easy and something that you can do easily, then try and involve yourself in that. Why? Because you will be able to do it better. So, for example, if your weakness is recitation of the Qur'an, you don't know how to recite the Qur'an properly, 
then you should try and recite those verses or those portions of the Quran which you are familiar with. But at the same time, you should try and improve on the rest of the Quran. Why? Because if you were to do something good in an incorrect way, you will be rewarded for your intention. However, you might not receive the full reward. So this month of Ramadan is a month where you can improve yourself. We know that Ramadan is a month of fasting where we stay away from the food. However, if we were to look around our families, our households, we are preparing for food. Yes, all the households have started preparing the food for the month of Ramadan. But we have to question, ask ourselves, what have we done to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan? What have we done to prepare ourselves to stay up at night in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you have to remember, you have to keep reminding yourself that the strength will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the strength if you were to look closely at the signs around you. You have children, 9, 10 years old, that were fasting 3, 4 years ago when the fast was 18, 19 hours long. And these kids, 9, 10 years old, were fasting the whole time. Yet you have old, early 20s, early 30s, and they say, it's too, it's too long. I can't fast, I can't manage. Allah knows I can't do it, I'm weak. No, the strength will come from inside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you that strength to be able to fast in the month of Ramadan and to be able to involve yourselves in all the different and all the many type of actions that you can involve yourself in. All you need to do is believe in yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the strength to be able to stand behind the Imam for an hour and a half listening to the recitation of the Holy Quran even though you might not understand it. But you will be rewarded for standing behind performing the salawah with jama'ah and listening to the Holy Quran. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you by your intention. So we have to try and make sure that we do everything we can in our power to prepare ourselves for this month. And then the strength will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many things that we look around us and we see there are certain things when we tell the children, you need to study hard to be able to pass your exams. If you pass your exams, you'll be able to get into a good university. And if you do that, then you'll be able to set yourself up for life. This is not guaranteed though, right? We know people that have bachelors and masters and PhDs, whatever they might have, but they might be unemployed. Why? Because sustenance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as Muslims, we have firm conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know that the actions that we do, the reward is going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the year after. We might not see any rewards for our actions in this dunya. Right? We might not see any rewards, we might not see any benefits of the actions that we do in this world. But the reason we do these actions is because we have firm conviction that when we die and when we leave this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us. And in the same way, we should also have firm conviction that when we do something bad, when we've missed a salah, when we've missed a fast, whatever it might be, we should have firm conviction that if we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sincere forgiveness, if we make tawbah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed forgive us. So we have to remember this and we have to constantly remind ourselves, especially in the month of Ramadan, when it gets difficult, when you're hungry, when you can't manage to do certain acts. Why? Because you, have, you haven't eaten in such a long time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the power to worship him in a manner that he was meant to be worshipped. And lastly, we should remember that when it comes to our Islam, that is our outward actions. Fasting, that is Islam. Performing salah, that is Islam. Giving zakah, going for hajj, that is Islam. And that is part of our religion. And we have to also remember to remain firm on our Iman. And our Iman is everything that we can't see or everyone around us can't see. Our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his books, in his angels, in his prophets, peace be upon them all. This is our Iman and we have to ensure that our Iman is just as strong as our Islam. We are not fasting for people. We are not fasting because everyone around us is fasting. We are not fasting because everyone's waking up for suhoor, I will wake up for suhoor. Everyone's not eating, I won't eat. No, you are fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Just because people can see this action doesn't mean you have to do it for them. You are doing it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you are surrounded by Muslimin or whether you are surrounded by people who don't fast, people who are not Muslimin, you still have to fast. Why? Because this action is solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is one thing that we have to always remember and we have to always make sure our intention is pure. And we have to always renew our intention that, Oh Allah, I am keeping this fast solely for your sake. I'm not doing it because my mother said so. I'm not doing it because my father said so. And I'm not doing it because everyone around me is doing it. I am doing it solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And oh Allah, give me the strength that I do this only for your sake. And if we feel at any moment that there's something coming in, that there's some sort of other intention coming in, immediately we should ask for forgiveness and renew our intention. That Allah, I, Ya Allah, I am doing this solely for your sake. Why? Because Allah alone is the one who will give you the reward for your fast. And Allah alone will reward you according to your intention. He will reward you according to your intention. So no matter how small of an action you might have performed, if your intention is pure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you according to your intention. And in the same way, no matter how great an action you perform, if your intention is not sincere and if your intention is not pure, then you won't be rewarded for that great action. Matter of fact, you might be punished for it. Why? Because you have committed riya, which is showing for other people. Performing an act. Why? Because you want to show other people. So always remember that when you do any action, Specifically now that the month of Ramadan is coming, you are fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can take inspiration from other people that, oh, these young children are fasting. I can do it. This person is old. He might have health conditions. He's fasting. Why can't I do it? So you can take inspiration from other people, but your intention and your action should be solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to witness this great month and to be able to make the most of this month. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us all our good actions and we ask him to grant us pure and sincere intention and we ask him to forgive us for any shortcomings that might have happened on our part for indeed whatever good we do does not increase in Allah's value and whatever bad we do does not decrease in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's value whatever we do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only benefit us so we have to always remember this Ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabi